Hi there. We're on day 223 of our Through the Bible in one year. We're in Jeremiah, reading another four chapters today. Remember, he was considered the crying prophet because he had very sad news, and nobody ever did listen to him, but we can listen to him now. Huh? <clears throat> All right, the drought. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Jeremiah mourns, her gates languish, her people are on the ground in mourning. Jerusalem's cry rises up, their nobles send their servants for water. They go to the cisterns, they find no water. Their containers are turned empty, they are ashamed and humiliated, they cover their heads, the ground is cracked since no rain has fallen on the land. The farmers are ashamed, they cover their heads. Even the doe in the field gives birth and abandons her fawn since there is no grass. Wild donkeys stand on the barren heights, panting for air like jackals. Their eyes fail, because there are no green plants. Though our guilt testifies against us, Yahweh, act for your name's sake. Indeed, our rebellions are many. We have sinned against you. Hope for Israel, its Savior, in time of distress. Why are you like a foreigner in the land, like a traveler stopping only for the night? Why are you... <clears throat> like a helpless man, like a warrior and able to save. Yet you are among us, Yahweh, and we are called by your name. Don't leave us. This is what the Lord says concerning these people. Hmm? Truly, they love to wander. They never rest their feet, so the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their guilt and punish their sins. Okay. False prophets to be punished. <clears throat> And the Lord said, said to me, Do not pray for the well-being of these people. If they fast, I will not hear their cry of despair. If they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I will not accept them. Rather, I will finish them off by sword, famine, and plague. Wow. <clears throat> and I replied, Oh, no, Lord God, the prophets are telling them. You won't see a sword or suffer famine. I will certainly give you true peace in this place. But the Lord said to me, Those prophets are prophesying a lie in my name. I did not send them, nor did I command them to speak. Command them or speak to them. They are prophesying to you a false vision, worthless divination, the deceit of their own minds. Wow. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, though I did not send them, and who say there will never be sword or famine in this land. By sword and famine, these prophets will meet their end. The people they are prophesying to will be thrown into the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. There will be no one to bury them. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters I will pour out on their own, their own evil on them. Wow. <laughs> Jeremiah's request. <laughs> you are to speak this to the word to them. Let my eyes overflow with tears day and night. May, may they not stop. For the virgin daughter of my people has been destroyed by a great disaster, an extremely severe wound. <clears throat> if I go out to the field, look, those slain by the sword, if I enter the city, look, those ill from famine, for both prophet and priest travel to a land they do not know. Have you completely rejected Judah? Did you detest Did you detest Zion? Do you? Why do you strike us with no hope of healing for us? We hope for peace, but there is nothing good for a time of healing, but there is a, there was only terror. We acknowledge our wickedness, Lord. They go through our fathers. Indeed, we have sinned against you. Because of your name, don't despise us. Don't disdain your glorious stone. Remember your covenant with us. Do not break it. Can any of the worthless idols of the nations bring rain? Or can, or can the skies alone give showers? And are you not the Lord our God? We, we therefore pour our, put our hope in you. For you have done all these things. <clears throat> the Lord's negative response. Chapter 15. Then the Lord said to me, even if Moses and Samuel should stand before me, my compassions will not reach out to these people. Send them from my presence and let them go. If they ask you, where will we go? You must tell them this is what the Lord says. Those destined to de for death, to death. Those destined for the sword, to the sword. Those destined for famine, to famine. Those destined for captivity, to captivity. All right, wow. I will ordain four kinds of judgment on them. This is the Lord's declaration. The sword to kill the dogs to drag away, and the birds of the sky and the wild animals of the land to devour and destroy. I will make them a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth because of Manasseh, son of Hezekiah. 
the king of Judah for what he did in Jerusalem. And Manasseh was a horrible, awful, evil person. Okay. And I think and I think Manasseh is the one who had Isaiah killed. Son in hand. Wow. <clears throat> <clears throat> Who will have pity on you, Jerusalem? Who will show you show sympathy towards you? Who will turn aside to ask about your welfare? You have left me. This is the Lord's declaration. You have turned your back, so I have stretched out my hand against you and destroyed you. I'm tired of showing compassion. I scattered them with a winnowing fork. At the gates of the land, I made them childless. I, I destroyed my people. They would not turn from their ways. I made their widows more numerous than the sand, than the sand of the seas. I brought a destroyer at noon against the mother of young men. I suddenly released on her agitation and terrors. The mother of seven grew faint. She breathed her last breath. <clears throat> her sun set while it was still day. She was ashamed and humiliated. The rest of them I will go over to the sword in the presence of their enemies. This is the Lord's declaration. Jeremiah complains. <laughs> Well, it was me, my mother, that gave that you gave birth to me, a man who incites dispute and conflict in all the land. I did not lend or borrow, yet everyone curses me. The Lord's response. <clears throat> I will certainly set you free and care for you. I will certainly intercede for you in, in a time of trouble, in your time of distress with the enemy. Can anyone smash iron, iron from the north or bronze? I will give up, I will give up your wealth and your treasure as plunder without cost for all your sins in all your borders. Then I will make you serve your enemies in a land you do not know, for my anger will kindle a fire that will burn against you. Well. <clears throat> Jeremiah's Prayer for Vengeance. You know, Lord, remember me and take note of me. Avenge me against my persecutors, and your patience don't take me away. Know that I suffer disgrace for your honor. Your words were found, and I and I ate them. Your words became a delight to me at the joy of my heart, for I am called by your name, Yahweh God of hosts. I never sat with the band of revelers, and I did not celebrate with them, because your hand was on me. I sat alone, for you filled me with indignation. Why has my pain become unending, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? You truly have become like a mirage to me, water that is not reliable. Jeremiah told you to repent. <laughs> Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you return, I will restore you. You will stand in my presence. And if you ask, and if you speak noble words rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. It is they who must return to you. You must not return to them. <clears throat> then I will make you a fortified wall of bronze to this people. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you. This is the Lord's declaration. I will deliver you from the power of evil people and redeem you from control of the ruthless. All right. Okay. No marriage for Jeremiah. <laughs> Chapter 16. The word of the Lord came to me. You must not marry or have sons or daughters in this place, for this is what the Lord says concerning sons and daughters born in this place, as well as concerning the mothers who bear them and the fathers who father them in this land. They will die from deadly diseases. They will not be mourned or buried, but it will be like manure on the face of the earth. They will be finished off by sword and famine. Their corpses will become food for the birds of the sky and for what the wild animals of the land. Well. <clears throat> but this is what the Lord says. Don't enter a house where a mourning feast is taking place. Do not go to lament or sympathize with them, for I have removed my peace from these people. This is the Lord's declaration. He always says that as well as my faithful love and compassion, both great and small, will die in, the, in this land without burial. No lament will be made for them, and no one will cut himself or shave his head for them. Food won't be provided for the mourner to comfort him because of the dead. A cup of consolation won't be given, to, given him because of the loss of his father or mother. You must not enter the house where, where feasting is taking place to sit with them and eat and drink, for this is what the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel says, I am about to eliminate you from this place before your very eyes, and in your time, the sound of joy and gladness, the voice of the groom and the bride. Right. Abandoning the Lord and his will. When you tell these people all these things, they will say to you, why has the Lord declared all this great disaster against us? What is our guilt? What is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? 
<clears throat> then you will answer them because your fathers abandoned me. This is the Lord's declaration. He always puts that in there and followed other gods, served them and worshiped them. Indeed, they abandoned me and did not keep my instruction. You did more evil than your fathers. Look, each one of you is following the stubbornness of his evil heart and not obeying me. So I will hurl you from this land into a land you and your fathers are not familiar with. There you will worship other gods both day and night, and I will not grant you grace. However, take note. Are you ready? The days are coming when it will no longer be said, as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites from the land of Egypt, but rather as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites from the land in the north and from all the other lands where he had banished them, for I will return them to the land I gave to their ancestors. Punishment of exile. I'm about to send, I'm about to send for my fishermen and they will, and they will fish for them. Then I will send for many hunters and they will hunt them down on every mountain and hill and out of the clefts of the rocks. My gaze takes, my gaze takes in all their ways. They are not concealed from me and their guilt is not hidden from my sight. I will first repay them double for their guilt and sin because they have polluted my land. They have filled my inheritance with the lifelessness of their detestable and abhorrent idols. Yeah. Yeah, right? The Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in a time of distress, the nations will come to you from the ends of the earth and they will say, Our fathers inherited only lies, worthless idols, and no benefit at all. Can one make gods for himself? But they are not gods, therefore I am about to inform them. And this time I will make them know my power and my might. They will know my name is Yahweh. All right. Okay, chapter 17. The persistent sin of Judah. Mm -hmm. The sin of Judah is written with an iron stylus, <clears throat> with a diamond point. It is engraved on the tablet of their hearts and on the horns of their altars. While their children remem remember their altars and their actual poles by the green trees on the high hills. My mountains in the countryside, I will give up your wealth and all your treasures as plunder because of the sin of your high places and all your borders. You will, <clears throat> you will on your own relinquish your inheritance that I gave you. I will make you serve your enemies in a land you do not know. For you have set my anger on fire. It will burn forever. Wow. Curse and blessing. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says. The man who trusts in mankind, who makes human flesh his strength and turns his heart from the Lord, is cursed. He will be like a juniper in the Arab in the Arabah. He cannot see when it he cannot see when good comes, but dwells in the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land where no one lives. The man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is the Lord, is blessed. He will be like a tree planted by water, sends its roots towards the stream it does not fear when heat comes and its foliage remains foliage foliage <laughs> remains green it will not worry in a year of drought or or cease producing fruit the deceitful heart the heart is more deceitful than anything else and incurable who can understand it i yahweh examine the mind i test the heart to give to each according to his way according to what his actions deserve he who makes a fortune unjustly is like a partridge that hatches eggs that didn't lay. In the middle of his days, his riches will abandon him, so in the end he will be a fool. A throne of glory on high from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. Lord, the hope of Israel, all who abandon you will be put to shame. All who turn away from me will be written in the dirt, for they are have abandoned the Lord, the fountain of living water. Jeremiah's plea. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. You are my praise. Hear how they keep challenging me. Where is the Lord? Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come. But I have not run away from being your shepherd. I have not. I have not longed for the fatal day. You know my words were spoken in your presence. Don't become a terror to me. You are my refuge in the day of disaster. Let my persecutors be put to shame. But don't let me be put to shame. Let them be terrified, but don't let me be terrified. Bring on them the day of disaster. Shatter them with total destruction. Right. <clears throat> hey, observing the Sabbath. This is what the Lord said to me. Go and stand at the people's gate, through which the kings of Judah enter and leave, as well as at all the gates of Jerusalem. Announce to them, hear the word of the Lord, kings of, kings of Judah, all Judah and all the residents of Jerusalem who enter through these gates. This is what the Lord says. 
Watch yourselves. Do not pick up a load and bring it through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. You must not carry a load out of your houses on the Sabbath day or do any work. You must consecrate the Sabbath day, just as I commanded your ancestors. They wouldn't listen or pay attention, but became obstinate, not listening or accepting discipline. Hmm. We do that today, don't we? However, you listen to me, says the Lord, and do not bring loaves through the gates of the city on the Sabbath day, and consecrate the Sabbath day, and do not work on it. Kings and princes will enter through the gates of the city, and will sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses with their officials, the men of Judah and the residents of Jerusalem. The city will be inhabited forever. The people will come from the cities of Judah, from the area around Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin, and from the Judean foothills, from the hill country, and from the Negev, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifice, grain offerings and frankincense and thank, and thank offerings to the house of the Lord. If you do not listen to me to consecrate the Sabbath day by not carrying a load while entering the gates in Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, I will set fire to its gates and it will consume the citadels of Jerusalem and not be extinguished. Wow. He just keeps getting more and more serious, doesn't he? He is done with them. Hmm. And tomorrow, 1800. Tomorrow has five chapters tomorrow. Huh. Parable of the potter, deluded Israel, plot against Jeremiah, the clay jar. Jeremiah beaten by pressure. Hmm. Jeremiah compelled to preach. Huh. Jeremiah's lament. Wow. Zedekiah's request deny. A warning to the people. Judgment against sinful kings. Message concerning Sean. A message concerning Jaquim. Wow, tomorrow is a very long read. But... There you have it. That's day 223. And we're getting through Jeremiah. I only noticed a little bit of where he's talking about the future. Most of this is, well, it's all talking about the future of Judah and Jerusalem, you know. And they, they were driven out. And they had to, they were exiled in Babylon for a long time. Strange land. So there you have it. That's day 223. We're working our way through the whole Bible. I haven't missed anything yet. Catch up on any you may have missed. So you say you got the whole Bible in a year. But till next time, we'll do it again. See you then.